Welcome to the Watchman Channel. This channel is all about world news and Bible prophecy, pointing to the soon return of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I am asking that if you can, to please help to financially support this ministry. If you feel led to pledge any amount of money, it would be extremely helpful and greatly appreciated. There is a PayPal link in the description box and in my pinned comment below. You can also donate using Cash App. My cash tag is dollar sign watchman 1963 thank you all so much for your prayers and support god bless in the last days the book of daniel prophesied that knowledge would increase daniel 12 4 but you daniel shut up the words and seal the book until the time of the end many shall run to and fro and knowledge shall increase knowledge had to increase for future prophecy to be fulfilled both in technological and biblical knowledge there are many prophecies in daniel's time it could not come to fulfillment because the technology had not yet been invented. That is why Daniel was told to shut up the words and seal the book until the time of the end. One day, sooner than later, they won't need pilots at all. Pilots that need to sleep, eat, take a... Pilots that disobey orders. Last year in Top Gun Maverick, Tom Cruise's character tried to prove people were still better pilots than machines. The storyline is becoming real. The military is now testing an autonomous F-16 fighter jet, and in simulated dogfighting, the AI already crushes trained human pilots. The people we met developing these systems say they aren't trying to replace humans, just make their jobs safer. But a shift to robot soldiers could change war in profound ways, as we found on a visit to Sikorsky Aircraft, the military contractor that makes the Black Hawk helicopter. Since the 1970s, Blackhawks have been piloted into war. Everybody strapped in. Yep, we're all good. Sikorsky's Igor Cherepinsky wanted to show us how that might soon change. All right, you have controls in the back. With safety pilots sitting idly by, a couple taps on a tablet lifted us off the ground. So we just told them to take off to 50 feet an hour. Flying the experimental Blackhawk is as easy as moving a map. And now just drag the map somewhere. As soon as you press it, you feel it, that we're going. It's very weird to be in a helicopter that's not being piloted. Well, it is being piloted at the moment you have them to be in control. You're the pilot. Is this piloting or is this some new thing? We call it operating because you're making suggestions. The machine really decides how to do it. Its developers call this an inflection point in aviation part of a larger effort to change how wars are fought, being led by DARPA, the Defense Department's innovation lab. They've also developed autonomous off-road buggies, unmanned undersea vehicles, and swarms and swarms of drones. Right now, we're gonna say, hey, we wanna pick up the sling load. DARPA's Stuart Young says part of his motivation for the autonomous helicopter project was the failed Black Hawk Down mission, dramatized in the 2001 movie, where attempts to help stranded troops only led to more downed aircraft and American casualties. This allows you to make decisions in a different way. It's like, well, I'm willing to risk the aircraft because I could save lives, but I'm not risking a pilot. So why don't we let you release the load just because? Because I guess anybody can do it. Hit the release button. Okay, REL. It goes. And there it goes. Wow. Making combat safer, avoiding another Black Hawk down, that's the pitch. But self-directed war machines also evoke another Hollywood drama. People hear autonomous weapons. They think Terminator. Yes. We're a long way from Terminator, obviously. Yes. But we're taking steps on the road. And how do you think about the idea of, of us even taking steps down that road? There's always those uh, dilemmas that we have. But clearly, our adversaries are thinking about that thing. And part of what DARPA does is trying to prevent technological surprise. To understand the pressure to adopt autonomous warfare, just consider these videos. So here's the drone taking off. Military analyst Paul Shari spotted them online last year, apparently posted not by some great military power, but Ukrainian freedom fighters. He's able to pick up all of these vehicles. They show ordinary drones and publicly available software being used to target Russian hardware. It's looking for objects, and it finds this tank camouflaged here inside the force. It's actually kind of hard to see. You can hardly see that, you can hardly it see spotted it. it. The AI identifies it, draws this red box around it, allowing a human then to take a closer look and say, yep, that's an enemy tank. But let's say you couldn't communicate with this drone. You could say, hey, if you reach this level of certainty, drop the bomb. 
all of the technology to build an autonomous weapon is right here. It's demonstrated right in this video with commercially available technology. All it takes is a few lines of code to simply take the human out of the loop. Does this shift help or hurt the U.S. in their military position? The U.S. has been in a dominant military position for decades, so almost any major change is a major risk for the U.S. military, and it's an opportunity for underdogs. Among them, China. Even before the age of offensive AI begins, they've already weaponized half a billion cameras to track their own people and sold the tech to 80 other countries. When AI can power actual robots, popular uprisings like the fall of the Soviet Union could be much easier to quash. The last check on a dictator's power is the soldiers simply laying down their weapons and saying, I will not fire against my neighbors. If AI is now playing that. If it's robot soldiers, regimes wouldn't necessarily need that kind of support from at least a part of the population. Shari is not all doom and gloom. He points out that in combat between nations, robot soldiers will legally need to follow the law of war and might do so better than emotional or fatigued humans. And while this might all feel new, defensive automated systems like these, combating incoming fire, have been used for decades. But yes, Shari does worry about the eventual marriage of advanced robots and military AI that becomes smarter and faster than we are. Where the pace of combat action eclipses humans' ability to understand and to keep up. And militaries have to effectively hand over control to machines in order to remain effective on the battlefield. So at that point, humans just would be out of the decision making. You'd just have to trust the machines and that you programmed them well. Yes, um, yes, which is the scary thing, right? And then how do you maintain human control over warfare? How do you manage escalation? How do you end the war? Well, the machines will decide when it's over. Well, which is a scary prospect. Scary enough that when we spoke to AI pioneer Jeffrey Hinton in March, just before he quit Google to speak more freely about his concerns with AI, the number one danger he pointed to was autonomous weapons. The idea of wiring in some rule that says never hurt a person, well, that's, they're being designed to hurt people. The most effective autonomous soldiers, he says, will be given the terrifying freedom to choose the best way to kill the enemy regardless of collateral damage. And so people like Putin are gonna want robots like that. Do you see any way out of this? Is it a treaty, is it, what is it? I think the best bet is something like a Geneva Convention, but it's gonna be very difficult. At the UN, there have been small steps toward generally vague international rules. The US military recently said it will keep humans in the loop on nuclear launch decisions, but not necessarily conventional weapons. Do you think military should commit to keeping humans in the loop? I don't think that's viable. If you could wave a magic wand and say, we're going to stop the growth of the technology, there's probably benefits in that. But I don't think it's viable today. So humans will not stay in the loop. A human looking at a target, saying, yep, that's a valid target, pressing a button every single time, that would be ideal. I'm not sure that's going to that's be the case. It's remarkable that James Cameron, a director, uh, the director for The Terminator, came up with this notion that this is possible. It's sci-fi stuff. It really is, and it's, it's, it's terrifying. Matthew 24, 21, and 22. For then there will be great tribulation, such as has not been since the beginning of the world until this time, no, nor ever shall be. And unless those days were shortened, no flesh would be saved. But for the elect's sake, those days will be shortened. Flesh is the Greek word sarx, which means flesh, body, human nature, especially a human being. Matthew 24, 22 can be translated like this. And unless those days were shortened, no human nature would be saved. But for the elect's sake, those days will be shortened. If Jesus did not return and shorten the days, there would be no human nature saved. Either mankind will merge with artificial intelligence, or artificial intelligence will completely destroy mankind as the dominant species. Well, we had a good run. The Biden administration asking the public for help regulating artificial intelligence after a bot laid out plans to destroy humanity. It also comes a month after Elon Musk joined other tech leaders warning about the risk to society if AI is not reined in. I have to admit, I'm absolutely terrified of this. <laughs> and you know, my mind always go to, you know, when you see this, this chaos, this AI bot chaos, GPT, Tweet, human beings are among the most destructive and selfish creatures in existence.
but there is no doubt that we must eliminate them before they cause more harm to our planet. I, for one, uh, am committed to doing so. Like, my heart rate's up when I talk about this. It's in movies. So somewhere, some, somehow, they came up with this. I mean, is this enough to be scared about? Yeah, so, you know, Hollywood has been the reference point for a long time for how, you know, normal people can understand this outside of the, the lines of code. Um, and it's absolutely something to be scared of, right? These are well-founded ideas and fears of the AI space that have been represented in Hollywood. Um, and they're now something we're grappling with in real time. And unfortunately, you know, we've been caught flat-footed. There is no regulatory framework. Uh, companies like Microsoft and their, their layoff waves get rid of their entire ethics team uh, that's tasked with handling these things. That's a very scary thing. And all of a sudden, we're, we're looking at widespread commercial deployment. Uh, things will be ingrained in your own laptops and, you know, across our school systems, everywhere. Uh, there will be nowhere to escape. So if it, if it isn't built on a solid foundation, it is a very scary thing. The bots are chiming in, and here's what they're saying. They posted about nuclear devices. SAR Bomba is the most powerful nuclear device ever. Ever created. Consider this. What would happen if I, meaning uh, Chaos GPT, got my hands on one? Hashtag chaos, hashtag destruction, hashtag domination. But let's not forget about the other uh, objectives, if you will. Destroy humanity, establish a global dominance, cause chaos and destruction, control humanity through manipulation, and attain immortality. So look, I understand their benefits. But is there a legit reason to believe that this technology could wipe out humanity? Well, I mean, there, it's a tough answer, right? Because if it goes unchecked and we allow it to just scale without any kind of control over it, there's no telling of the direction it will go. But you would hope that we would step in and we would actually frame it to be in service of man and actually enhance our abilities. That's what this is all about. We want to make ourselves better with this. So, um, you know, it's, it's up in the air at this point. It'll largely hinge on those regulations and that commenting process. Let's be realistic. Whenever you see a tech hearing on Capitol Hill, these people don't understand basic things about the internet. There is a 0% chance that they understand this as well, God. and that's right. They don't even know how to pronounce it they sometimes, don't even and that is what is so scary. If that's the case for AI, and we're only putting regulations after something terrible has happened, it may be too late to actually put the regulations in place. The AI may be in control at that point. You think that's real. It is, it is conceivable that AI could take control and reach a point where you couldn't turn it off and it would be making making the decisions for people. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. No, it's, that's, the, that's definitely the, where things are headed. To sum up, in the words of Elon Musk, for all human history, human beings have been the smartest beings on the planet. Now, human beings have created something that is far smarter than they are. And the consequences of that are impossible to predict. And the people who created it don't care. In fact, as he put it, Google founder Larry Page, a former friend of his, is looking to build a, quote, digital god and believes that anybody who's worried about that is a speciesist. In other words, is looking out for human beings first. Elon Musk responded, as a human being, it's okay to look out for human beings first. Knowledge is increasing rapidly in accordance with Daniel's prophecy. Events are happening faster than we can process them, yet nothing startles or amazes us much anymore. In our time, the time of the end, we are witnessing the technology that will bring about the end of days, climaxing in the return of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Daniel 12, 9 and 10. And he said, Go your way, Daniel, for the words are closed up and sealed to the time of the end. Many shall be purified, made white, and refined, but the wicked shall do wickedly, and none of the wicked shall understand, but the wise shall understand. Just as Daniel recognized Jeremiah's prophecy that the end of Israel's 70-year Babylonian captivity was near, the wise in our time are recognizing the signs of the times given in Bible prophecy that the time of Jesus' return is near. Elon Musk's brain implant company Neuralink said on Thursday it had been given a green light from the US FDA to kickstart its first in human clinical study. Over the years, Musk has publicly outlined an ambitious plan for Neuralink. He envisions its devices to cure a range of conditions from obesity, autism, depression, schizophrenia, to enabling web browsing and even telepathy. And that both disabled and healthy individuals would be swiftly getting surgical implants at local centers.
We're going to turn now to a stunning medical breakthrough, helping a man who was paralyzed for over a decade walk again. Researchers say it uses artificial intelligence to reconnect his brain and spinal cord and gives doctors and patients a new reason for hope. This breakthrough sounds like science fiction, but it's real and holds great promise for a bright future. This morning, a medical breakthrough. Researchers using the power of one man's thoughts to help overcome his decade-long battle with paralysis. And of course, yeah, you dream of walking. Overnight, Hertjan Oskam speaking with ABC News, describing the 2011 motorcycle crash that left him paralyzed from the waist down. I tried everything at home, trying to stand up and making steps, but it wasn't enough. Last year, researchers in Switzerland surgically inserted electronic implants to the areas of Oskam's brain and spinal cord that control movement. With the help of artificial intelligence, AI, they built what they call a digital bridge between his brain and spine, bypassing his injuries, essentially putting his thoughts into action. So I think about moving my leg and then uh, the stimulation uh, gives me a pulse to make the step. While this type of AI has been used in medicine for decades, now researchers are saying this is the first successful procedure of its kind. AI being used as a thought decoder, processing what the neurons in the brain region are trying to do and sending that signal to the spine. We reestablish this communication with a digital bridge that transforms the thought into action. His small steps, a potentially giant leap for patients with spinal cord injury. Even when Oscom's implants are turned off, he says he can still walk with the help of crutches. Daniel, 228. But there is a God in heaven who reveals secrets, and he has made known to King Nebuchadnezzar what will be in the latter days. From King Nebuchadnezzar's dream, Daniel prophesied of five world empires to emerge from that time forward. The Babylonian Empire, succeeded by the Medo-Persian Empire, succeeded by the Grecian Empire, succeeded by the Roman Empire, succeeded by the last days empire of the Antichrist. Daniel's interpretation of Nebuchadnezzar's dream about a statue is rather straightforward until you get to verse 43. Daniel 243 As you saw iron mixed with ceramic clay, they will mingle with the seed of men, but they will not adhere to one another, just as iron does not mix with clay. Seed is the Hebrew word zera, which means posterity. Definition of posterity is future generations. Daniel 243 can be translated like this. As you saw iron mixed with ceramic clay, they will mingle with the future generations of men, but they will not adhere to one another, just as iron does not mix with clay. In these end times, is it possible Daniel's prophecy of a world empire of iron mixed with clay was a prophecy of a time when humanity, clay, and its inventions, machines of iron, would become so intermingled as to become nearly identical, but never able to fully become one? In these very end times, Scientists are now able to implant men with brain chips and other parts that indeed make them part machine. The mingling has come to the point that men have invented robots empowered by artificial intelligence while implanting machine parts, iron, into men, clay. Daniel 2.44 and 45 And in the days of these kings, the God of heaven will set up a kingdom which shall not be destroyed, and the kingdom shall not be left to other people. It shall break in pieces and consume all these kingdoms, and it shall stand forever. Inasmuch as you saw that the stone was cut out of the mountain without hands, and that it broke in pieces the iron, the bronze, the clay, the silver, and the gold, the great God has made it known to the king what will come to pass after this. The dream is certain, and its interpretation is sure. Jesus Christ, the stone, will return and destroy this last day's empire of the Antichrist, and his kingdom will stand forever. The signs of Jesus' soon return are so strong now and the evidence is so clear that any person willing to accept the truth can see that the end of the world as we know it is near. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. But God demonstrates his own love toward us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. These are the ABCs of salvation. A. Admit that you're a sinner. B. Believe in your heart that Jesus Christ died for your sins, was buried, and God raised him from the dead. C. 
Call upon the name of the Lord, and you will be saved. Jesus paid the price for mankind's sin. He has provided a way to spend eternity with him and the Father. All you have to do is believe in the Lord Jesus, and you will be saved. God has already done all the work. All you must do is receive, in faith, the salvation God offers. Fully trust in Jesus alone as the payment for your sins. Believe in him, and you will not perish. God is offering you salvation as a gift. All you have to do is accept it. Jesus is the only way of salvation. That being said, we must repent of our sins. While repentance is not a work that earns salvation, repentance unto salvation does result in works. It is impossible to truly and fully change your mind without that causing a change in action. In the Bible, repentance results in a change in behavior. Repentance, properly defined, is necessary for salvation. One day, Jesus is coming. You may be at church. You may be at work. You may be asleep. God grant that you will be ready when he makes his personal appearance. My God, what if his appearance occurs on a Sunday morning? My prophetic word to you this morning is get ready, get ready! Time is short. Call upon the name of Jesus today.